The acetyl-CoA carboxylase mechanism is used in fatty acid synthesis. In this specific mechanism, it's similar to other carboxylases, and it's similar in the case that we are going to be using a biotin cofactor, which is going to be covalently bound to that acetyl-CoA uh, carboxylase enzyme. Now, let's look at the net reaction first. We have a bicarbonate, we have ATP, acetyl-CoA, and we're going to produce malonyl-CoA, and we're going to lose ADP plus PI. So what's important to note here is that we're converting acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA. Now what's the difference between these two molecules? Well, acetyl-CoA is a two-carbon molecule, whereas malonyl-CoA is a three-carbon molecule which means we have to add a carbon. Where is that carbon coming from? It's coming from our bicarbonate. You can see that we have a carbon right over there. But why are we using ATP? We're gonna use ATP to create a more active form of bicarbonate, which is going to be able to bind to acetyl-CoA to produce that malonyl-CoA. So if we take a look at this reaction mechanism, we can note that Acetyl-CoA carboxylase has these different domains. We have the biotin carboxylase domain, the trans carboxylase domain, and a biotin carrier protein domain. At the biotin carrier protein domain, we will see the biotin cofactor bound via a lysine residue. So this protein domain has this lysine residue and that lysine residue is going to uh, form a bond with biotin, which is acting as a cofactor. Now, biotin is actually going to act as a flexible arm, which is going to move our carbon dioxide from uh, one domain to another domain. So at the first domain over here, we're going to undergo this reaction in which bicarbonate is going to utilize the terminal phosphate on ATP to form carbon dioxide. So essentially what happens is that this bicarbonate, this uh, negative charge on this oxygen, is going to nucleophilically attack the terminal phosphate on ATP and it's going to form a carboxyphosphate intermediate. Once that intermediate is formed, that phosphate is going to, that same phosphate bond that we made is going to break off and we're going to result with carbon dioxide. I can quickly depict that right over here, what it's going to look like. So essentially, if this is our bicarbonate, we have that negatively bound oxygen, nucleophilically attacks that phosphate, so it gains a phosphate. So this is our carboxyphosphate intermediate. In the next step, it's going to be a spontaneous step where we're going to see we're going to lose this phosphate, so the electrons will go over there, and these electrons will come over here. And as a result, phosphate is lost and we're going to be left with CO2. Now, this CO2 is going to form a bond with the biotin. Now, this is all happening first at this biotin carboxylase domain. We are essentially carboxylating biotin. So it's called the biotin carboxylase domain. And in the next step, we can actually see that we lost ADP and PI because remember, we're losing that phosphate. First, we're attaching that phosphate to bicarbonate. Then we're breaking that phosphate. So the phosphate is lost and we're also left with ADP. So now we can see that carbon dioxide, it was uh, CO2. Now it is bound to the biotin at the biotin carboxylase domain. So now this biotin, it's going to move this carbon, uh, di uh, car this carbon dioxide, this CO2, and it's going to move it to the other side onto the transcarboxylase domain. And that's where we're going to see the second reaction occur. So we can see that it moved. It swung its arm from here to here. And now what happens is that we're going to see um or essentially what's going to happen if we zoom in is that these electrons over here on oxygen will be donated back over here to carbon so we're going to see that carbon dioxide form once again and these electrons are going to go over here and then 
this bond. So since carbon forms a bond, it's going to lose a bond, so these electrons will go here. Now, as a result, carbon dioxide is dissociated, so essentially CO2, and that CO2 is going to bind with the acetyl-CoA. Now here we can see we have acetyl-CoA right over here. So remember, it's a two-carbon molecule. So we have a carbon double bound to an oxygen, and we have a coenzyme A group, and then a methyl group. Now, when this carbon dioxide is going to bind to that acetyl-CoA, we will get the product malonyl-CoA. So you can see this uh, carboxylate group form over here at the end. So this group essentially gets added to this carbon, and now we've formed malonyl-CoA. So the only difference between acetyl-CoA and malonyl-CoA is that this is acetyl-CoA, and if we just add a carboxylate group to it, we get malonyl-CoA. And then we regenerate our biotin. Remember in the previous step, oxygen, um, it lost a bond here, but um, if we regenerate biotin, it's going to reform that bond over here. Uh, these two these two nitrogens will gain their hydrogens back because we have hydrogen available in the cell. And then we formed malonyl-CoA. And that is the first step, actually, for fatty acid synthesis. We need to form this malonyl-CoA because malonyl-CoA acts as the two-carbon donor in fatty acid synthesis. Um, and also it's important to note that this process of fatty acid synthesis is occurring in the cytoplasm whereas the reverse so this is fatty acid synthesis but when we talk about fatty acid breakdown that will be occurring in the mitochondria so the matrix of the mitochondria so overall we can see that we went from bicarbonate plus atp plus acetyl coa and we formed malonyl coa and this malonyl coa is going to be the building block of fatty acids